Hello mates and welcome to the Baron of Views, with me, the Baron. Today's game is Left Hand Path, a wizard RPG by developer Strange Company. This game first came onto my radar what feels like years ago, maybe even as far back as DK2 years ago, but it really caught my attention back then for its dark gothic style aesthetic, which really made it stand out as a game that looked like a cross between a horror and an adventure. Having sadly lost track of the game for all this time, I was pretty stoked to stumble across it as a fully released game on the Steam store. And now finally I can say that a cross between a horror and adventure game was pretty bang on guess. The game takes a huge amount of inspiration from Dark Souls, not just aesthetically, but also with regards to gameplay in certain ways, and that's no bad thing. The difficulty is high and oftentimes death comes fast and unexpectedly, but like Dark Souls, when you die you respawn back at the last checkpoint, but all enemies respawn too, so in that way you learn the levels through trial and error, making a mental map of ambushed enemy locations and learning the best strategies for defeating certain enemy types. You even collect souls, or husks as they're called in this game, as a form of currency that can be used to level up, and if you die you have the opportunity to reclaim your lost husks from your corpse. Besides leveling up, there's also an RPG element to the game, with the inclusion of some limited interactions with NPCs, just like Souls, and also a huge amount of lore to be discovered about the world for those who enjoy that kind of thing. The horror element of the game has three components to it. Firstly, the environments themselves are spooky, and very well done at creating a tense atmosphere. Then, there's a general dread of interacting with the creatures of the game. Ghouls and other creepy undead will lurch out of the shadows and lumber towards you, causing a general panic. And then finally, the fact that some creatures do pounce out of the darkness due to their strategic placing means that there is a jump scare horror element. In general, I hate jump scares, but the developer has actually included what he calls a low terror mode in the options, which increases the view distance and somewhat moves monster spawn locations, so they're less startling. As someone who hates horror games, I really appreciate this mode being available so that I could just enjoy playing the game without worrying about taking a heart attack. In the low terror mode, the game was still creepy as hell, though a little part of me did wonder if I was missing out on playing the game as it was meant to be played, so to speak. The main gameplay element of the game is in the spell casting, and this is something that it does really well. Casting spells is interesting. You cast using your hand to create gestures, similar to black and white, and then you cast a spell from your staff. I must say of all the spell casting games I've played so far, Left Hand Path has most forgiven shape recognition in the casting. Spells are found in tomes throughout the world, and finding new spells is quite exciting as you build up a roll of decks of castables. There's also the possibility of discovering rituals in tomes, which involve multi-step spell casting to fire off bigger spells that usually have a function towards progressing through a level. Graphically, the game looks great. Textures are not particularly amazing, but overall the tone is rich and moody. The lighting greatly enhances the atmosphere with how it works with the light sources to make the shadows dance on the walls, and since the majority of times the light source is your staff, this really makes exploring the creepy environments all that more immersive. The audio in the game is good, monster sounds are goddamn creepy, though I wish the spell sounds had a little more oomph to them. There's the occasional audio bug that needs to be ironed out, particularly with the monster's deaths, as sometimes the death audio gets clipped short. The soundtrack is not overtly musical, but rather more ambient pieces that set the mood with eerie drones and the likes. Oftentimes the environments are ominously silent, which works well for enhancing the suspense to when you inevitably hear that creepy sound coming from the darkness. The voice acting in the game is particularly good, in the oddest of ways. NPC voices sound very average Joe, using authentic British accents. But I loved this because it gave the game a little unique quirkiness to its identity, which is very refreshing from the dime a dozen RPGs that have actors spouting theatrical fantasy English. The weakest part of the game for me was in the animations. Right now they feel like they could use a little extra polish across the board. Wherever the enemy I've encountered so far, it feels like they sort of beeline straight towards you and then kind of blob on top of you with a generic looking attack animation. As well as that, hitting enemies with spells feels a bit hollow since they don't have any real reaction to spell impacts. It can end up feeling like you're just tickling the enemy with a feather. If you've ever played a magic user in Skyrim, then you'll have a good idea what I mean as it's very similar to that. Similarly, the dead animations feel a bit underwhelming and there was some bugginess with enemies clipping through the ground and so forth. Overall, the animations are perfectly functional, but not stand out. As I say, they could just use a bit of polish. Locomotion in the game is available through teleport or trackpad movement, and smooth turning is being added as a new feature. The trackpad movement made me super woozy, even more than usual and I don't quite know why. Teleport on the other hand minimised VR sickness altogether, but maybe you'll have a more solid stomach for the trackpad than me. One thing I think might annoy players however is, the game kind of encourages teleport spamming as a means of evasion in combat. Not a big deal for me, but I know how some VR players feel about teleport. 
Overall, left hand path is great fun and tries something a little bit different. I'd definitely love to see the game continue to receive some layers of polish. Also worth pointing out is that this isn't just some VR experience. With 15 hours of content, this is a real game. So if you want to play a wizard game with a Dark Souls vibe, this game may just be your cup of tea. That's it from the Baron. If you like this game, you can find it in the link below. And if you like this review, please remember to like and subscribe. So until next time, cheers.